Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almost exactly three years ago today, on August 21st, 2017, I had an experience that I will never forget. I was 440 miles from home, living by myself for the first time in 24 years, on the campus of the University of the South in Sewanee, Tennessee, completing my final year of seminary. Just the week before, I had met my new classmates who also moved from around the country and around the world to study, learn, and live in community and to be formed for the next adventure God had in store for us. The youngest was 24 and the oldest were in their 70s. We were from small towns and big cities and even villages. We all loved God, but all had different backgrounds, opinions, and strongly held beliefs. It was really strange to be back on a college campus as a student after 25 years. Just after fall classes started, the university announced they were suspending classes for the day so that everyone from the chancellor to the janitors could gather together in the middle of campus to celebrate the great American eclipse. This was the first time the solar eclipse had been visible across the entire United States since 1918. As I stood in the central quad on that hot sunny day, I put on my protective eyewear that looked sort of like those cheap 3D glasses you get at the movies. Music was loudly playing, college students were dancing and getting rowdy, seminary and faculty families were trying to corral their small children, and we enjoyed some food, laughter, and conversation. And no surprise, those seminarians could be overheard discussing and debating different theological ideas and opinions. As I looked around, I saw Chanju, Julius, and Jean, my new friends from Africa who had left their families and their countries behind to further their understanding of God. I looked around and saw Emily and Andrew holding their infant daughter Waverly in their arms. I looked around and saw Arthur, Jenny, and Jay, who had become my three closest friends at seminary. We didn't know it yet, but we would be changed forever, not just by this moment, but by our time together in community, by our study, and by our lively conversations. Just then, the music changed to the theme of Space Odyssey. When the eclipse began, everyone looked up and there was this perfect stillness that I cannot adequately describe. It was like the entire crowd took in a deep breath and held it. For a few minutes, you could hear a pin drop. For a few moments, we were acutely aware of nature and all that was around us. And in that moment, I felt both very small and also infinitely connected to the universe and everyone around me. My perspective shifted. I shifted. I was no longer worried about my assignments or my family back home in Little Rock. I just let it all go for a few moments. For a few moments, I stood in awe of how big the world was and how small we were. Eyes wide open, I stood in awe about how we were all connected to each other, to our nation and the world. As the eclipse became fuller, we all looked up and the temperature fell from the mid 90s to the 60s. And then it became as dark as night in the middle of the day. We all felt the wind pick up and swirl around us. For those few moments, the world stood still and hundreds of us stood on that lawn in awe and wonder. 
It was nothing like any of us had ever experienced before. Revelation. That moment when the world as you know it changes. Revelation. When you discover something new or see something in a new way. Revelation. When something you have seen a hundred times becomes new and clear. Like the joy a child feels when she learns to read for the first time and it all clicks. Like the joy you feel when you hold your baby or your grandchild for the very first time. Or the joy you feel when you look in someone's eyes and see them, really see them for the first time and realize that you love them. And then you realize that they see you and know you and love you back. And this love being seen and known and accepted changes everything. What you saw in a mirror dimly, you now see face to face. To be fully seen, to be fully known, accepted and loved, that is a gift, a treasure, a miracle. Jesus' disciples left their work, their homes, and their families to follow Jesus. The disciples saw Jesus heal the sick, feed the 5,000, and walk on water. Jesus was amazing. He was a mystery. It was a lot to process. Then Jesus asks his disciple, Who do people say that I am? Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Then he said to his disciples, But who do you say that I am? My closest friends, my disciples, you know me. Who do you say that I am? In that moment, one of the disciples, Simon, sees Jesus, really sees Jesus clearly and understands who he is. Simon says out loud what he may have been pondering in his heart for a while. In front of all the other disciples, Simon de declares, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Simon gives Jesus a new name for the disciples to hear, and the world shifts and changes. Jesus' ministry expands, and the vision of his ministry expands. The world becomes bigger and smaller at the same time because who Jesus is changes everything. It is revealed. The revelation that the man standing in front of them is not just Jesus, their friend and their teacher, but Jesus is the Messiah who God has sent to save and change the world. But just as wonderful. In the very next moment, in the very next breath, Jesus turns to Simon and sees him. Jesus sees Simon and all of his God-given potential, and Jesus proclaims the potential that he sees in him. At that moment, Jesus changes Simon's name to Peter, which means rock, and explains that on this rock, Jesus will build his church. Jesus expands Simon's view of himself and his life. Jesus boldly proclaims the future and the potential he sees for the Peter, for the church, for you, and for me. We have all had shifts in our lives in these past five months. Perhaps you have shifted and see things more clearly Perhaps you have experienced some revelation of what is really important and who is really important. Perhaps you see clearly more who you love. And perhaps you have already started to loose and let go of the things that don't really matter. People have started to loose and let go of those things that bind us and hold us back. The world is different now. Things has shifted, but God is still being revealed. And we are still being changed and called to open our eyes and see Jesus and to see the divine in one another. Beloved, 
it does not matter what the world sees in us, who the world says you are. It doesn't matter what people say you are. What matters is that Jesus sees you. Jesus loves you and Jesus sees the greatness in you. The plan God has for your life, the vision God has for your life is bigger than you can ask or imagine. And the good news is that when you fall, Jesus is there to pick you up and forgive you. Beloved, you were created in the image of God. God sees you and loves you like a newborn baby. God wants to see you crawl, to stand, to walk, and to run. And God knows that you will fall down. Falling down is part of the process. And it doesn't matter how many times you fall down. Peter, the rock of the church, was not perfect. Jesus told him how small his faith was. Peter denied Jesus three times, but Peter was also forgiven and was redeemed and saved and built the church. And so are we. None of the disciples were perfect. God does not expect us to be perfect. But God does command us to be faithful in prayer and service. And God commands that we share the good news of who Jesus is to us. Amen. May God give you the grace not to sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember that the world is now too small for anything but truth and too dangerous for anything but love. So may God take your minds and think through them. May God take your lips and speak through them. And may God take your hearts and set them on fire in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.